And welcome to the Woodworker Showroom. My name is Carmine, and today I'm going to show you what you can do with the Carbotec Mini Lathe. This is the Carbotec Mini Lathe. It has all the features of a full-size lathe in this compact package. Cast iron construction, precision bearings make this a top quality woodworking machine. The Carbotec is available either with a built-in variable speed motor or with a five-step pulley system to which you add your own motor. The Carbotec Mini Lathe can turn projects up to 12 and a half inches long between centers and up to six inches in diameter over the bed. Today I'm going to take you step by step through the process of turning your own 7 millimeter wooden pen. These make great gift items and the skills and techniques learned here will carry over into many of the other turning projects. We'll start off by first selecting some wood to work with. We can pick up some interesting pieces from the scrap bin. Here's some babinga, some wangi, and some goncalo alves or you can choose from the large variety of pre-packed and drilled pen blanks. Remember before you do any woodworking to think safety, read and understand your instruction manuals, wear the proper clothing, and above all, always wear your safety glasses. To start off making our wooden pen, you'll need to prepare some wood blanks. They need to be roughly square and drilled to accept a seven millimeter brass tube. Now when you have your own wood, you'll need to drill it yourself and this drill guide makes things easy. I take the blank, clamp it with the guide into a vise, and just use a common hand drill to drill the holes. It's important to remember to withdraw the drill bit from the holes to help clear the chips. Here's my finished and drilled blank. Now we need to prepare the blanks for turning on the lathe. These brass tubes are an integral part of many of the mini turning projects and they need to be glued into the hole we drilled earlier in the blank. This instant glue works well. Put a bit on the tube and twist the tube as you insert it to spread the glue evenly through the hole. It's important that the brass tube ends up flush with the wood blank. In some cases, the epoxy works well. It gives you a bit longer working time and it fills gaps better. Now we need to set up the Carbotec mini lathe with a mandrel to turn the blanks. The mandrels are available in several styles for various lathes, including Morse tapers and drill chuck ends. We install the mandrel on the headstock, just like this, then assemble the wood blanks and these bushings onto the seven millimeter mandrel. The bushings act as a guide to show you how far down to turn the wood blank. 
so that they match the metal parts of the pen kit. Now, bring up the tailstock, lock it in place, and give the mandrel nut a bit of a turn to lock it in place. Now we're set up to do our first pen. Now let's take a look at some turning chisels. These are several of the tools you will need to make our basic pen. These sets offer a good value and will allow you to do many types and sizes of turnings. As you become a more experienced turner, you'll begin to use more specialized tools for various cuts and techniques. I'm going to start off the pen turning with this 3 quarter inch spindle gouge. It's a good choice for making the square blanks round. Slow lathe speed and a light touch with the tool will avoid tearing the wood. I work the tool back and forth, running off the end of the wood, never in from the outside. Most beginners tend to get a death grip on the tool. It's best to try for a relaxed but firm feel to develop the necessary touch for lathe turning. I continue turning the blanks until I'm very nearly down to the brass bushings. Now this is a skew chisel I'm going to use next. This tool cuts very much like a hand plane on the rotating piece of wood. Here's what it looks like at full speed. Place the skew against the work and gently lift the handle till the blade starts to cut, then move the tool along the work. Now notice this smooth polished finish on the wood. This takes a bit of practice, so for your first couple of pens, you may just want to use the gouge and take it down to the bushings and then do your final sanding. It leaves a rougher surface, but it's a bit easier to do. Now let's move on to sanding and finishing. Like most woodworking projects, the sanding and finishing part can either make or break the project. It's important to start with the lowest grit of sandpaper and work your way up through the higher grits. Before we start, I've removed my tool rest so I don't catch my fingers in the spinning work. I'm starting off with 120 grit paper and I've mounted it to a block of wood. That keeps things straight and doesn't sand any bumps into the work. Work back and forth across both blanks. Slowly bringing the blank down to the level of the bushings. Now notice that I'm sanding across the grain as the lathe is turning, and that can leave some scratches in the work. So after every grit, I stop the lathe and sand just briefly with the grain of the wood. Now I'll move up the grit. And again, stopping to take out the scratches. Now some 220. And finally some 600 to really put that final polish on. Here's how our finished blank should look. Smooth, even diameter, and flush to the bushings. Now let's move on to the finish. 
almost any type of finish will work on our turn pen, but here we want something easy to apply and fast drying. We found that this particular mixture of one-third alcohol, one-third shellac, and one-third boiled linseed oil gives a beautiful finish. I've made up a application pad out of an old bit of cotton rag and a rubber band holding it together. It's very similar to an old French polish technique. Here's how it works. I start the lathe very slowly and apply the finish directly to the blank as it's turning, using the pad to support it. As the finish works into the blank, I'll speed up the lathe and press a bit harder. The finish is actually being burned and polished right into the wood. For extra protection, I'm going to put a second coat on. Again, slow the lathe down. A little bit of finish. Work it in. Then speed up the lathe and press hard a bit with the pad. There we have a beautiful finish for our turn pen. The best part is the finish is dry and we're ready to move on. We have one more step to do before we actually assemble our pen and that is to trim the barrel end square with our barrel trimmer. I need to remove the blanks from the mandrel. and the barrel trimmer squares the end of the tube blank to the center hole. That way, the wood blank will mate perfectly with the metal parts of the pen. Now, if the blanks are longer than the tubes when you start, you can trim before you turn. The barrel trimming also removes excess glue from the tubes. The next step is to lay out the pen parts so that you understand exactly how the pen goes together. Now don't worry, there are instructions provided with every kit to tell you exactly what to do. The best tool for assembling your pen is a common bar or pipe clamp. I start the parts together by hand. There's the tip into the barrel, here's the clip onto the top. And we'll start the wooden part here. Now, use the clamp to squeeze the parts together. Oh, and by the way, make sure the jaws are padded so you don't damage the pen parts. And as so I gently squeeze the top together, our pen cap and now there's the tip of our pen and now the mechanism The mechanism part gets gently pressed in till just about the brass is covered and that first ring is at the top of our lower blank. Then we add the ink. A 
trim ring. And we have our first wooden pen. To display and present your hand-turned pens, there is a large variety of boxes, pouches, and cases. When friends and family see what you've made, I guarantee you'll be making more. Next, I'm going to show you some more styles of pens and some other turning projects on the Carbotech Mini Lathe. Now I'd like to show you several other pen styles. These designer, traditional, and classic style pens are larger and as you can see have different sized wood components. And as you look at these finished blanks, you can see that this one has a recess or rabbit cut at one end. Some styles are even tapered or shaped along the length. Let's set up the Carbotec just as before with our 7mm mandrel and these bushings for our designer pen. Notice the blanks have been drilled and have the brass tubes glued in just like the previous pen. Only this time, the two different length blanks need to be properly arranged on the mandrel with these step bushings made especially for this style of pen. The kit does come with illustrated instructions for this setup. Tighten the nut on as before, bring up the tailstock, and now start turning cutting the blanks down to the bushing diameters just like the first pen. Don't cut all the way down to this part of the center bushing just yet. This is where we create the rabbit for the center trim ring. And those are the finished blanks. Now the best tool for cutting the rabbit is a sharp parting tool. It has to be a precise, clean cut to look good. To help us here, we install the actual trim ring from the pen kit on the mandrel and use it to check the size of both the rabbit and the outside diameter of the blank. While I'm actually turning, I secure the ring to the bushing with a small piece of tape so that I don't damage it with the turning chisel. When the fit is right, sand and finish the wood blank as before. And there we have our finished blanks. Let's get them out of the lathe now. The trim ring gets secured to the blank with a drop of instant glue. And then we assemble the mechanism, pen tip, and cap just as we did before with the pipe clamp. And here's our designer pen. All of these different styles of pens follow a similar procedure to the designer pen, and depending on the style, you may need to get different sized bushings and mandrels to work with the kit. These kits also require special bushings, 
The good news is that most of them fit right onto our 7mm mandrel and that they are made just like a pen. So far we've only scratched the surface of the things you can do with the Carbotec Mini Lathe. Now I'd like to show you some more turning projects and give you a few tips on turning technique. Turning projects are generally divided into two types. There is spindle or between centers work where the axis of the lathe is parallel to the grain of the wood. And then there is bowl or faceplate work. That's where the grain of the wood runs perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. Each type of work requires slightly different technique, tools, and setup. The pens and other small projects we have done so far are considered spindle work. Note how the grain runs. Let's take a look at some other examples of this work. Here are a couple of mallets, a kaleidoscope, a candle holder, and a handle on our magnifying glass. Notice that all of the projects shown have some common features. Coves, the scooped out part, beads, the rounded over parts, and flat sections all combine to make the various items. Once you master these three cuts, you can turn just about anything. Let's get started by mounting up some wood for spindle turning. The blank you need doesn't have to be perfectly square, but you do need to find an approximate center. Here's an old Turner's trick. Hold a pencil like this and go around the end of the blank, just like this and mark the center. Now decide which end goes to the headstock and start a hole with a drill for the drive center. Lightly tap the spurred drive center into the blank with a handy mallet and now we mount everything onto the lathe. Set up the tool rest at a comfortable height, close to the work but not touching. Check this by hand turning the blank. Select a medium spindle gouge and begin to round the blank just like we did with the pen. Now, remember earlier when we talked about some specialty tools? This is called a rough out gouge. And this tool is specially designed to turn a square blank into round quickly. If you'd like a quick way to test to see if you're fully round without stopping the lathe, just rest your tool on top of the blank. If you hear that bouncing, it's not quite there yet. Now I think we're round. Once the blank is completely round, we're going to take a pencil and make some layout lines along the length of the spindle perhaps following a plan for a turn spindle or stool leg. Now start the lathe, darken in the lines, and use the parting tool to define the various parts of the turning and their diameter.
these calipers are set to the dimension of the diameter from our plans. These parting cuts will guide me through the rest of the turning. I use my three-quarter spindle gouge again and work the tool back and forth between my parting cuts, always cutting downhill. Notice how the parting cuts tell me how far down I need to cut. And you can see the cove emerge in the cut. Now the beads, or rounded overcuts, are done with the skew chisel. These parts will define the location of the bead. I simply take the skew and roll it as I deepen the cut for a bead. Now we'll do a straight cut. The trick to a successful cut is first rubbing the bevel of the tool on the bare wood, then lifting the back of the tool as it starts to cut, moving the tool along the wood. That gives that nice polished finish another bead over here now. Now remember to keep a relaxed grip on the tool and keep practicing. Let's finish this up now. This is going to be a candle holder for a glass candle. Now let's sand and finish our project just like we did with our pens earlier. There we go, all set. Let's get this out of the lathe. 
And our first spindle project will be a wooden candle holder. Now a more artistic use of the Carbotec mini lathe is the making of beautiful turned bowls and vessels out of exotic woods. These projects are considered faceplate work because of the grain running perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. Bowls are mounted to the lathe with a faceplate, usually with screws, glue, or double face tape for small ones. Here I have a piece of cherry screwed to the faceplate that comes with the Carbotec mini lathe. I use a bowl gouge, this is similar to a spindle gouge but with narrower flutes, to work the outside of the piece, first bringing the tailstock up to help support the work. I'll start working the outside of the bowl first. The bowl turning technique depends as much on feel as it does on seeing what you're doing. Like in spindle turning, I be sure I rub the bevel first, lift the tool into the cut, and feed the tool along the work as the cut begins. At some point I want to hollow out the inside of the bowl. I can get a head start on this by using a drill chuck and a Forzner bit in the tailstock. After a lot of work with the tools, sanding, and finishing, we have our finished bowl. As you gain more experience with the Carbotec and learn more about turning in general, you'll begin to work with three and four jaw chucks and other ways to hold the work you're turning. You'll even begin to experiment with some man-made materials, such as plastics and composites. This is Carmine from the Woodworker Showroom, and I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the Carbotec Mini Lathe and the world of lathe turning. It's a craft and a hobby you can enjoy for a lifetime.
All of the products, tools, and kits shown here are available at the Woodworkers Showroom Retail Store, located just outside of Northeast Philadelphia in Huntington Valley. Be sure and stop by if you're in the area. If you need catalog information, technical support, or customer service, you can contact us at the address and phone numbers at the end of the tape.